Hello everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Thank you so much for watching my video. Today I'm gonna to be covering how to launch a nuke again. And I just wanted to do this again because I do get a lot of comments of people still having trouble launching nukes, especially since the uh, turrets are extremely overpowered at the moment. But I just wanna show you it's still easy and yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I would recommend is Master Infiltrator. Now this is a legendary perk. I would get it leveled up all the way just so you can go a little bit quicker, but even level one you can do it with. You'll just have to do the hacking and the lock picking process. I also recommend getting Crowd Control. This is a weapon you can get from Eviction Notice. It is a lucky drop if you do get it. Um, it's not a guaranteed one every time, but if you can get this gun, it will help you so much in the silo as I'm going to show later, if not just any explosive weapon. Okay, so I'm just gonna say too, I have done a couple other videos on this. I'm gonna link them in the description in case you don't know the fundamentals or even the basics of launching a nuke. There may be some stuff that I skip over in this video that it may confuse you if this is like the first time you're launching one. Um, this is more for people that need help launching it and have probably already researched a little bit about it. But if you need help, again, I will link those videos and yeah. Check them out if uh, there's anything I may have missed. You can also hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so when you come into the silo, it's about basically taking out the turrets, whether you're turning them off or destroying them like I am here. Now I just recommend destroying these three or four, five actually, in this area that I'm showing. It'll just make your life so much easier. And I just want to point out, I'm not in a power armor. You do not even need a power armor to do this. But if you are a low health build like I am, I recommend you just getting your health full for the silo run. You can easily fix that with, you know, a gamma gun or, um, you know, dirty water. And always looking for a blue key card as well. Make sure you get the turrets, like I said, I did show all five locations, so you might want to go the same route I just did too, and you probably won't even get hit by them, or hit much for that matter. And here's a biometric card that we need, here's another spawn over here I just want to show. Um, if you have a power armor too, if you're doing this in a power armor, which will make this even easier in my opinion. Um, you can put your power armor in the doorway there to block the robots from running in here while you're getting your, uh, what's it called, your biometric data there from the, uh, the machine. And yeah, and then we're just going to run back this way. We don't have to worry about any turrets because we already took them out. And then we're going to just, you know, swipe our card and delete the information on it and add all the new stuff and fabricate biometric ID. Again, if this is com confusing to you, you may want to check the links in the description. Those are more basic ways, or sorry, more basic tutorial of launching a nuke. I am definitely going to run through some stuff fast here. And again, hit me up in the comments. I can probably just answer your question as well. Okay, so we got the grid, or got through the grid. Now just, you know, there's a turret right there. Make sure you're taking these turrets out. They are extremely overpowered right now. And, you know, it's not even a bad thing, I think. It makes running the silos a little bit more fun, I think, to be honest. You know, there's a chance that you could just get mutilated pretty quick now, so that's kind of cool. Um, before you take out the next two turrets, if you're taking your time like I was here, um, you can run through this part pretty fast, but just, just be weary. There's an Assaultron that likes to hide back here. And these two turrets up here, if you do go, like, slow, they will kill you. Even one of them will kill you if you're not prepared. So, just, I suggest taking them out like I do here. Get a ranged weapon. Preferably something better than a plasma caster or a two-shot 50 cal I had on me, but it was the best thing I had. And, you know, I'm not getting hit by these lasers too much, so that's kind of nice. Like I said, you can almost just run through this part. Um, the, the trick is, is just, you know, practice, practice, practice. You'll only get better at this and you'll find faster ways to do it. Keeping in mind in this area, there is a lot of rads. So I'm going to show you a way to deal with that if you have a problem. 
but pretty much just run through here you know this is why you want master infiltrator because any of the doors and the hacking you're just not going to have to worry about you're just going to run through here and again making sure you're taking out all of these turrets even the ones in the previous room you never know you might go back in there for something trust me i've done it and they've killed me so make sure you're taking out those turrets now before we go to the next area again i just want to show if you don't have like a good set of armor, I, I'm using unyielding um, secret service armor, which I do highly recommend or any power armor to run through here. But just to show you how bad the rads can be if you're not wearing armor. If for any reason the rads in this area are a bit of like trouble for you, in this area right before you run into the room where you unlock the first door, there are hazmat suits in here. This is just in the room past the double turrets that we took out with the plasma caster. And yeah, the hazmat suit was glitched out a bit there, I guess. But uh, make sure you don't grab a damaged one. You don't want a damaged one. You want one that just says hazmat suit, and then you'll be able to run through this area very easily. As I'm showing here. <laughs> and you can see we're barely taking any rads, so... You may have to use this if you don't, um, you know, have a good set of armor yet. And also, do not forget to put back on whatever armor it is you have after this point. You won't have to worry about rads anymore. This is pretty much it. And again, you know, make sure nothing's following you before you go onto the computer. Because you don't want an Assaultron to creep up on you while you're in a hazmat suit, trust me. <laughs> okay, so on to the next area here. Now this is the reason why I recommend the crowd control. Again, you can pretty much use any explosive weapon, but the crowd control, you know, from eviction notice, there's a good chance you've probably got one already. Maybe hang on to it because it's really good for this area. Now before you go in here, just sneak around the corner and take out that turret. The turrets in this area are probably the cause for me dying the most. And I just want to say, you know, it's definitely a, a this is probably the worst area. For, for dying in. So just make sure you're taking out the turrets like I said before. Um, there's a hidden one kind of here around the corner here. Um, if you can just shoot those uh, mainframe cores really quickly, you won't have to worry about it. But I just wanted to show just in case, because again, you never know when these turrets are gonna you know hit you from the most inopportune place, that's for sure. They really like to do that. Look how good that weapon is for taking out the uh, mainframe. I love it. Uh, there is no turret in this room. I thought there was, but I didn't see one. No, there's not. So again, just taking your time coming through here. You'll get faster and faster the more you practice. Again, taking out all the enemies so you're not uh, bothered while you're going to the terminal here. And we're actually going to turn off the turrets in the next room. and deactivate. You cannot do this without Master Infiltrator. You need to have Master Infiltrator at least one to hack the computers. And like I said, I recommend having it max level because then it'll skip the hacking game and the lock picking game. Look how quick this gun destroys the mainframe. I love it. I don't even really pay attention to the enemies in here. You can see I just run through here really quickly and I'm usually on my way. But just to show you the door that you go through here, like this is the area that I was just in over here. And then once you destroy the mainframe, this will unlock so you can go through it. Just so there's no confusion of the door you're looking for. Also keeping in mind, there are Assaultrons lingering. They will follow you from this room and there is one that's usually down the stairs here. Sometimes if you're slow, he'll come up before you get here. But if you go fast, he'll probably be right about where I am now. And uh, just keep an eye out for him. Okay, so we're going to take out three turrets in this room. And make sure you don't go running in the room. You might want to take it out in the doorway like I did there. These turrets will kill you fast. If this is your first time running the silo. If um, it isn't, then I'm sure you know by now. And we're going to go into this locked room, unlock the terminal, and we're going to turn off the turrets in the next room. Because they are pretty powerful in the next room too, and extremely annoying, even before they were uh, 
buffed or whatever you want to call it. They're definitely doing a lot more damage than they used to. Yeah, make sure you take out this Assaultron too. He can be a pain in the butt. And then we're just going to come up to this area here and start grabbing the damaged mainframe cores. And what we're going to have to do is repair these. And we're just going to come over to this room here beside where the sentry bot was. And there is almost 100% of the... Well, I guess it almost wouldn't be 100. So 99% of the time, there's going to be some Mr. Gutsies in this room. So just be weary of them. We're going to come up to the Tinker's workbench here. And then we're just going to... You know, go under quest items and repair all of those. Now we have 15 mainframes. Now, if you don't have circuitry, you can find the 15 mainframe cores. You can see there's one sitting on the machine right there. So you can find them all around this room. Just keep that in mind. I like to do that sometimes, you know, just so we're not wasting circuitry. But ever since the alien event, I have tons of it. So I'm not really worried about it anymore. And once we've replaced all the mainframe cores, or... I think that's what they're called. I, I, whenever I think of mainframe core, I think of Nuka World in Fallout 4, so forgive me if I'm confusing those two right now. I'm sure you know what I mean. Another turret here you might want to take out. Make sure you're reloaded, unlike me. And just to show the damage they do, like look at how fast my health went down there. And this is with a full set of Secret Service armor, so um, th that's why I do recommend a power armor too. But I just wanted to show that even without a power armor, you can make this extremely easy. Especially with practice. If this is your first time, it's going to be a little bit of trouble. So just, just know that if you die a couple times while you're doing this, don't get discouraged. Just keep at it. You will get a nuke launched, I assure you. Um, not forgetting to come up to the computer here that I just showed before you go into the launch area here. Um, you definitely want to take out the turrets in this room. That's what I did on the terminal there. I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. And then you just want to come in here, take out all the enemies before you go up to this terminal upstairs, which is going to begin the launching of the nuke process. And we're going to have to defend some robots. There we go. Launch control terminal. There's usually a couple of Saltrons around, so just keep that in mind. Also, I like to farm technical data while I'm in here. I found up to four in this area one time, so just keep that in mind if you like technical data. I'll probably do a video on that soon. I have like a hundred of it, so looking forward to doing that. Okay, wanted to talk about friendly fire as well, too. This is a great perk to have on when you're launching a nuke, especially if you're using the flamer like I am. Um, I will link in the description a beginner holy fire build that you can use for running this that i'm using right now and with the friendly fire perk on and the flamer it's really easy to repair the officers if they get destroyed and you can punch them or you can use your flame to heal them as i'm going to show now you can see this one's legs were gone and boom they're back <laughs> that's how amazing this perk card is it can make robots grow legs so don't underestimate it. And then basically, you know, with that aside, just take out the turrets. I take them out still that we did turn them off, but I do take them out just to get all the, you know, the circuitry and the aluminum from them. And I go around and look for technical data. It's pretty easy to keep an eye on the robots. Again, I will link in the description a more basic video explaining on how to do this part as well if you're not familiar with it for the most part you're basically just babysitting these five robots and if one gets destroyed you can easily repair them and it'll send out another one you can't really fail this you just keep at it and eventually the bar will fill all the way which i'm showing here after so long you'll get three robots and after those have been out for a bit you'll get five until eventually the bar is full and then you're able to launch the nuke. It's very simple, especially if you're solo. Um, if there's another person in the silo, it can be tricky if they're not helping you, because then you're going to get twice as much as the robot. So I would definitely recommend doing this solo unless you've got a really good friend that's going to stick by your side the whole time. So just keep that in mind. And then after the bar is filled, you will be able to launch a nuke. Now you will have to have a nuclear key card, and you will have to put in a code. 
especially if this is your first time, you will need this. I will also link in the description a site that will tell you the weekly codes to type in for each silo. So yeah, definitely use those. It's a lot easier than trying to encrypt the code. I don't think anybody really en encrypts the code or decodes it or whatever you want to call it. And then we're just going to go over to the targeting computer and we are going to launch a nuke. Now I just wanted to show quickly, if you want to do a Scorch Beast Queen event, then you want to hit Fissure Site Prime. Now this is where I would launch it. You only need to have the nuke covering a little bit of Fissure Site Prime. And then this way everybody can fight the Scorch Beast Queen at Drop Site V9. That's kind of... I would say how most people like to fight the queen, so just keep that in mind when you're launching a nuke. Um, if you want to fight the Ultrasite Titan, you're going to have to nuke Abandoned Mine Shaft 2. Now, you, there's no real special spot to put this, um, and you will fight uh, the Titan at uh, the Nuka World there, as I was showing. Um, keep in mind that you need to make sure that this one is fully nuked. Um, if it's just off of it a bit, it might not some or uh, summon seismic activity so just keep that in mind i've i've just had the nuke barely over it once and it didn't work so just make sure you're nuking it and if you want to fight earl the colossal problem event then you will want to nuke monongo mine which is right here i do recommend that you just nuke the place left of monongo mine monongo overlook because it will still cover monongo mine and then that way when people are escaping at the end of the event they won't be stuck in a nuke zone they'll be able to run to the east there a little bit quicker and get out of the blast zone so just keep that in mind for other people when you're launching it, and of course you'll still be able to do the event, because uh, Monaga Mine is covered. And that's pretty much it, everybody. I really hope this video can get you guys to launch a nuke again. Let me know if you have any questions. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Pay attention to comments, too. There may have been something I might have missed in this video that other people will point out, and... Yeah, very knowledgeable people on the channel, so definitely pay attention to the comments. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate all the support on the channel lately. It's just overwhelming. I don't know what to say. I love you guys. Take care. Have a great day.